Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication known as dextroamphetamine. Its brand name is Dexedrine. But before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. Amphetamines are non-catecholamine sympathomimetic amines with CNS stimulant activity. In terms of indications for use, dextroamphetamine or dexedrine is indicated to be used in the treatment of ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And it's also indicated to be used in the treatment of narcolepsy. Before somebody was to use dexedrine, there are some contraindications that they must clear, as well as some precautions and warnings that they should be made aware of. This medication will be contraindicated to be used in patients who are experiencing agitated states. It's also contraindicated in patients who have advanced atherosclerosis. Patients with symptomatic cardiovascular disease would not be able to use dextroamphetamine. It would be contraindicated in patients who have a history of drug dependence, as well as in patients who have glaucoma. Patients who have a hypersensitivity to sympathomimetic amines or amphetamine would not be able to use dextroamphetamine or dexedrine. It would be contraindicated in patients who have moderate to severe hypertension, as well as in patients who have hyperthyroidism. And finally, for contraindications, this medication cannot be used within 14 days of a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. In terms of precautions, it should be noted to patients that this medication does have a high potential for drug abuse or drug dependence. Amphetamine misuse can cause severe cardiovascular events, which in some cases can lead to death. Aggressive behavior and hostility has been reported with the use of dexedrine, so monitoring of these sort of side effects would be recommended. There's a chance that this medication may precipitate manic or mixed episodes in individuals who use this medication who have bipolar disorder. Growth suppression is possible with this medication with long-term use. So monitoring of growth, it would be recommended in children, and treatment interruption may be necessary. Myocardial infarctions, or heart attacks, strokes, as well as sudden death, has been reported with the use of amphetamines at their normal prescribed doses. This medication may exacerbate symptoms of behavioral disorders, or thought disorders, in patients who have a history of psychosis. Psychotic or manic symptoms, so hallucinations, mania, or delusional thinking, may occur in children or adolescents with no prior history of psychotic illnesses or mania. This can happen at the usual doses and discontinuation may be warranted. Seizures may occur with the use of this medication as it does have the potential to lower the seizure threshold. This would be more common in patients who are using other medications as well that also lower the seizure threshold or in patients who have a history of seizure disorder. Serotonin syndrome may occur with the use of dexedrine Patients would be at an increased risk of experiencing serotonin syndrome if they're using other medications that also affect serotonin levels. Children who use dexedrine who also have a personal or family history of tics may put themselves at an increased risk of exacerbating tics. And this would be the same for Tourette's syndrome. So if a child has a history or a family history of Tourette's and they use dexedrine, they may put themselves at an increased risk of exacerbating this illness. Finally, visual disturbances, such as blurred vision, has been reported with the use of stimulant medications. And once somebody is cleared of the contraindications and made aware of the precautions and warnings, and they start to use dexedrine or dextroamphetamine, they can expect to receive their dose in an extended-release capsule form, tablet form, or in solution form. When children greater than or equal to the age of 6, or adolescents, are using dexedrine to treat their ADHD, they would typically start off with an initial dose of 5 mg, which would be given either once or twice daily. The first dose of the day should be taken in the morning, and the dose should be increased by 5 mg daily each week until the optimal dose for the patient is obtained. The usual range for the maintenance dose would be somewhere between 5 to 20 mg daily given in divided doses, and the maximum dose would be 40 mg per day. The usual interval between doses, depending on if you're giving it two or three times daily, would be four to six hours. When adolescents are using dexedrine to treat their narcolepsy, 10 milligrams daily would be given initially, and then the dose would be increased by 10 milligrams each week until the right dose for the patient is obtained. Maximum daily dose would be 60 milligrams, and this would be given in one to three divided doses throughout the day. Again, the dosing interval would be four to six hours between each dose. 
As with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using Dexedrine, so I'll go over some of those here now. Cardiomyopathy, hypertension, palpitations, and tachycardia have all been reported. Some patients experience aggressive behavior or dizziness. Others experience euphoria, exacerbation of tics or Tourette syndrome, and headache, insomnia, and mania are also possibilities. Overstimulation, psychosis, and restlessness have been reported. Some patients experience a change in libido or weight loss. Constipation, diarrhea, and an unpleasant taste are possibilities. Some patients experience frequent erections or longer lasting erections. However, impotence is also a possibility with dexedrine. Abdomyolysis, tremors, and finally blurred vision are also possibilities with this medication. That's all we're going to talk about today with dexedrine or dextroamphetamine. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to combine and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.